Oh, hello. My name's Kittle, and I'm Trace, and I'm going to be showing you a bit about nature drawing. I'm going to show you some things from my new book, Landing with Wings. Just so you remember, it's Trace Bauer. So, should we have a look? Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Okay, what what do you got? Well, I've got my new book. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Landing with wings. And so, in here today, I wanted to show you um, about when you're doing nature drawing. Um, Something that's really interesting that I, I've got an example of in the book is so this scene is often in the in the book the same scene and that's in their school and you can see here the tree that they're sitting under it's in flower and that tree is a long leafed box so you see I've got a close up over here of some of it that's a long leafed box and that's in flower so later on in the story a little bit later Oop. Uh, it's still in flower and then a little bit later oops there's the same tree and there's no flowers at this time and you might actually recognize this character Clancy he's from my other books uh, River Time and Rock Hopping and he's sitting up the tree reading one of these books. I really love trees, so it's nice to put them in my stories. And then this book's set over a whole year, so I think by the, the last one of these, up there, it's starting to flower again. So that's something you can do, is to look at something over a period of time and draw it. So Miri, the character in this story, she has a little nature journal and something that's great about having a nature journal is on this page here that she, um, she got a book and she thought about birds and she thought, oh, that bird, I'll read it. She says, hey, I think that's a bird I've been seeing around. Let me check my sketchbook. And then she looks in the book and it matches her. And so she knows which which bird it is. So that's a really good thing if you're doing some sketches. It helps you identify what the thing might be that you're sketching. And also, like um, in this story, she's watching the frogs over a period of time. So here she's saying, "As the weeks pass, my sketchbooks fill up with new friends." And that might happen for you guys too if you get to go outside and draw some things changing, like frogs and tadpoles. Most exciting of all, the tadpoles are, tadpoles are growing long, are growing legs. Now they can move even faster. Look at that. A little bug has a close escape from the tadpole. They must be tasty. So the little bug is spinning on the top of the water and then it flew away. And I'll just show you one more thing in this book. So, um, I... Another thing that you can do is have a look at a whole year of how something lives and what changes over the seasons. So I've structured this, this story around a whole year of how a frog lives called the Bibran's Toad. So in the start of the year, it starts to call, the males are calling, and then they're starting to be breeding. That's when they're making the babies. And then look, there's some eggs starting to come. And later over here, there's the tadpoles, and then they start growing up. So the whole story is set around that. And I've just got, this is about how I made the book. So there's something else here that's interesting, is my favourite way to observe nature is to sketch it. By having a closer look, I appreciate, I see and appreciate so much more. And that's what happens to Miri, the girl in this story. She does the same. She loves to sketch things. And over here, you'll see the tools that I'm using. 
I often use watercolour pencils and actually how about I show you what I'm using today so I've got a pencil and well I, actually just before I show you I might just show you a couple of examples from my own sketchbooks so sometimes when you're drawing in your sketchbooks it might just be something that just happened you can't really draw while you're swimming can you so this is a picture while I was swimming with my friends and it was just such a lovely time I wanted to remember it so you might like to do a drawing about a lovely time you had somewhere in nature just to remember it and you might stick it near your bed or somewhere around the house to help you remember that lovely outside place might be somewhere you went on a holiday or somewhere in your back garden or somewhere special to you somewhere relaxing is a nice thing to do you can see I'm very relaxed right there and look at my boy he's blowing bubbles doing handstands and you can see up here that I've been writing on it as well I love to mix up writing with my pictures and then this one's very different this one's while I'm looking so and I've drawn um, about the same size or maybe a bit bigger than the things that I'm looking at it says every single beautiful seed pod full of potential so there's so many each single seed could grow into a tree and that's the outside so I like to write about them and then um, over here this bits from a memory we see an amazing snake maybe a little too close for comfort that snakes for me as well and so I quickly moved away you can see I've got my gator on here to help protect me in case a snake came too close and wanted to have a nibble on me Ooh, I hope that didn't happen no I was really safe so how about I show you my tools now so first I'll start with a pencil and why don't I just have a go and I'll show you as I go so I've chosen something from my garden and the first thing I do is like I'm not going to draw it exact I don't mind but I'd like to try and draw some of the different stages so I, I just give myself a little guideline of where I'm going to draw that might I might put one there and I might put one there one there and then I'm going to have all these and I might be doing it a bit bigger than the one that I can see and then after I've used my pencil, and I use a pencil that I don't have to sharpen. This one's great. It's got the, oh, <laughs> it's got the lead inside, which is actually quite long normally. And then I've got this excellent pen, which um, is called a Twisby Go. And I don't have to keep buying pens either. I just fill it up with ink, and I'm using waterproof ink. And then that's like a squeezing thing to get more ink in. But I won't squeeze it all. All the ink will fall onto the page. So I'll just draw a little bit of this. I love how there's different stages. So I can see on this bit. And I'm just going to draw it quickly and relaxed. Because I, I find then if I see that plant again, I'm going to remember it. And I'm also going to appreciate things about it a lot more because I'm having a good look. So, so there's lovely little bits at the top with all the pollen on them. And it doesn't matter if you don't know the name of things because actually you can like find out about a plant. If you keep drawing things, you'll start to understand them anyway. And the leaves are very little near to it, I'm noticing. I've never drawn one of these before, so and I'm noticing they're curled over. But the other leaves are a lot bigger. I might put one there. And it doesn't matter if I don't do them in exactly the same spot. I'm just having a bit of a look. And I might put a bigger leaf over here. You see I'm not really going with my guidelines that much. They're just giving me a bit of an idea. And then I might turn it over and draw this one that's a paler colour. So I'm guessing, like I was saying, when you draw something you start to understand it. I'm guessing that this one's a bit older. It's been opened a bit longer. And look at that bit. That might be where the something different was going on up the top there 
I'm not a scientist and I wasn't paying enough attention at school to remember a long time ago what that's called but I know there'll be plenty of ways that you can find out maybe if you look online and then this one here looks even older look at that one I think they're older because the colors kind of and it's sort of looking a bit um, like it's getting a bit rotten and it's only got a couple of little bits on it and then what about this one over here that one's just only like the little cup bit at the bottom looks like the flowers fallen out but then this middle bit's still there so for me I love to draw different stages of something and another thing I really like doing is mixing up my colors to try and match the colors that I'm seeing and then oh look in there that must be a new one that's going to come I don't know if you can see that so I'm going to say newer I think it's called a bud and then bright flowering getting a bit getting a bit old a bit like me getting a bit old and a bit wrinkly and spotty and this one's in between so the next thing that I use which you might like is this one so that's a um, aqua brush I can write that down aqua brush and when you open up the aqua brush, you might be able to buy these online. One end of it's got the brush and the other end's like a little bottle where you can put water in. So you can keep filling it up to see how there's some water in there. And then I will write down this as well. That's the fountain pen. And the reason I've got waterproof ink you'll see in a second because the other thing I like to use is my lovely paint set. So I'll put that there. And I'm going to turn it around so you can see the colours. So I might start with a little bit of the yellow. I'm going to try for this one here so it's sort of a nice green yellow. And we could have a spot over here to try and mix the colours, but that's not bad. I've been practicing for a long time, so I'm pretty good with my colours. Pretty good. And I did forget something that um, you could do if you were fussy. You could rub out the... Well, not even fussy, if you felt like it, you could rub out the pencil where you started and you can see my pencils in a very different spot than the than the ink come back here <laughs> so what about that one's a bit more murky isn't it it's a more of a murky color and that's i've got it over here And then I can see going down the stem, it sort of goes a bit more of a reddy colour. Maybe not quite that much. So you get the idea of what I'm doing. I've got, oh, this one's not, a sort of a paler green. I can get that sort of colour. It's a lovely thing and it can take up a lot of time, but... Probably quite a few of you got quite a bit of time now to take up such a nice bit of time in your day. And where's that little one? Oh, that's the cup one. Um, you can see I also use my hand to wipe things on. And my hand will get another good wash. Don't you worry. We're getting lots of washes at the moment, everyone. Right. 
Let me that color on there. So you get the idea of what I'm doing. And I reckon it might just about be time for you to have a go because you're probably going, oh, that looks fun. I might try that. I'll just put a bit of dark green in there. Not really that sort of green, is it? It's probably got a bit more blue in it. So you can see how I'm I'm pretty loose with my colours and and my lines, but that means that I'm having a nice time. If I start getting too exact with it, I'm probably not going to have such a nice time. So my suggestion is just do it in a relaxed, sketchy way rather than too much. And then if you want to come back, then you might after that do a more detailed one. Or you might just add a few little details, like I can see some sort of lines on there. Yeah. I could quite happily sit here for hours, like, working on this. All right. I'm going to let you guys have a go now. And um, enjoy. What do you think, little friend? Yep. I reckon that looks really fun. Have fun having a go. Bye. Bye.